Hello Oregonians and people of Earth, welcome. Today we are going to be talking about dams. Not damsels, those things that block the flow of water. So most of the environmentally educated and mindful intelligences of planet Earth already know the negative impacts of dams. So this is for the newbies. Let's go over why dams suck. They block fish passage, including salmon runs in which the First Nation people depended on for food until colonizers came and forced them into reservations, taking not only their food source and way of life, but their freedom to steward and maintain the sensitive ecosystems which dams destroy. Dams also prevent the return voyage for fish that is necessary for their life cycles. Additionally, it's not just indigenous communities who have been misplaced by dams. Dam projects have also pushed people out of their homes for construction, and in some cases people lost their homes when the structural integrity of the dams collapsed. Dams can also limit genetic diversity of fish, which means less genetic resilience, weaker genes, and decreased survival rates leading to population decline. Dams can also contribute to water loss via evaporation due to larger surface areas which are common for most dams, as opposed to the slender channel of natural river systems, which in turn changes the microclimates of surrounding areas, as explained in this article. Increased evaporation in the region of a large dam changes the moisture concentration of the air, leading to increased heavy rainfall. This deprives the surrounding areas of their traditional rainfall patterns, placing stress on ecosystems and municipalities that depend on those patterns. And it leads to an increased rate of storm surges, which can create more frequent and intense flooding than the dam was designed to handle. So you can see how this circles back and causes further issues. Organic materials like leaves and logs get stuck behind dams, and while they decompose, they consume a lot of oxygen, which creates oxygen dead zones and algae blooms which life cannot survive in. The aquatic organisms that evolved to live in those natural river systems struggle to adapt to the unnatural conditions that the dam creates, which change the temperature and the depth of the water in which they are not used to living. This of course has consequences to aquatic life downstream and other ecosystems which have a relationship with that water. Here's a picture of how low water tables from dams result in an environment too shallow for fish to survive. Sediment carried by rivers is also crucial to habitat formation downstream, but gets stuck behind dams unable to make the journey. So you can see how one issue can lead to many others and carry those issues downstream. But I can't talk about dams without mentioning agriculture. That's right, our unsustainable agricultural system which continues to demand more and more water every year. Some dams provide water to agricultural systems, so many farmers can be impacted by dam removals. As our water supply decreases due to unsustainable agricultural practices, we continue to see little progress in addressing the issue of unsustainable ag due to financial interests and lack of education. People who think they can take from the land what the land cannot provide. Human law doesn't hold up to natural law. The earth has limits. Our resources have limits. Animal agriculture especially drains our freshwater supply, and large-scale agricultural operations that need to be maintained in order to feed all of these animals further depletes our precious water supply. This doesn't include the food humans actually need for survival, such as fruits and vegetables, which are further robbed of resources from the animal ag industry. Okay, I just learned about these things called manure lagoons. Water is used for these toxic stews of animal feces, and apparently Smithfield Farms is trying to capitalize on it as a biofuel. Let's hope that never happens, or you can say hello to water rationing, which, in case you're just tuning in, has already been happening to farmers across the US. I've gone over unsustainable ag practices before, but just as a recap, Unsustainable agriculture begins with monoculture because it diminishes genetic diversity which reduces plant resilience. Large scale agricultural operations because they take up hundreds of thousands of hectares of land which displaces flora and fauna diminishing biodiversity. Tilling which breaks up soil aggregates, the stuff that holds soil together for stability and soil health. Large heavy machinery driven over the land which compacts our soil, suffocating soil life and preventing regeneration, causing soil runoff, hardpan, and then some. Fresh excrements, mmm, from yours truly, animal agriculture, which creates an opportunity for pathogens to thrive, and fecal stews to drain into our water, traveling long distances, poisoning life along the way. 
And lastly, unnatural fertilizers, nutrient additives, and agrochemicals, which pollute the land, air, and water. These can leach into the soil and contaminate well water and underground aquifers, as well as other bodies of water. Modern agriculture clearly needs to change, but we need the people to be educated and big businesses to be held accountable for their crimes against nature. Forests are another factor which are mercilessly exploited by the timber industry. But our forests hold water in the soil with their roots in tandem with soil microorganisms. But taking trees away weakens forest stability. The soil can't hold on to as much water, the water moves out of the system and the system falls apart. Rivers dry up, forests become increasingly vulnerable to fire, and we lose that which we depend on for life. Nonetheless, water is life. Humans need potable water for food, for hydrating our cells, for basic bodily functions and maintenance, and for flushing out toxins. And we need water for sanitation, to prevent the spread of disease. The worst part of it is, is that we've known since the beginning that modern agriculture and dams cause tremendous ecological damage. Native Americans were stewarding this land and then colonizers came over here and destroyed hundreds of generations of work in just a few hundred years. To add insult to injury, most people in America are too proud to admit that they're part of the problem and choose blissful ignorance at the expense of our beautiful planet. Don't be that person, educate yourself. And educated people supports community resilience and community sustainability. Now dams were put into our beautiful environment for a reason. They were either to generate electricity or redirect water to farms. And because communities have built their lives around these dams, they're going to need to adapt to the absence of them. Farmers may need to find another way to get water to their farm and make some pretty big decisions. There's something that I want you to understand about these farmers. They are not ecologists. Most of them inherited their farms from their predecessors who were promised land and water from the federal government. That land and water which belonged to the First Nation people. Our government is a dirty rotten thief. So naturally there's been a war going on between water protectors and farmers. There wasn't enough water for everyone, but instead of making the federal government accountable for the issue, farmers waged war against the native inhabitants. Again, most farmers aren't ecologists, they are not known for considering the long-term consequences of their actions on the environment, or others for that matter. Sorry farmers, calling you out. I know it's not all of you, but you all own stolen land, by the way, and you're making money off that land, so calling you out. Join forces and unite under one nation, land back. But aside from the people, the ecosystems which have been impacted by these dams will take time to recover and restabilize. Again, these changes will take time, but are nonetheless a great step forward to sustainability long term for the human race, the planet, and our water resources. With the removal of these dams and the collective efforts of ecologists, botanists, and volunteers, we hope to see the fish return to these rivers bringing prosperity to tribal communities, and especially the return of native flora and fauna to rebuild ecosystem resilience. We will also see the resilience of people, businesses, and communities who will adapt to these changes and shift to support a sustainable future. The hardworking farmers and problem solvers that will come out on top even stronger than before. This should be a great lesson for future generations, that we should never take from the land more than what it can give. I'm not going to have the overpopulation conversation right now, but people need to understand that there are limits to what the land can give. And when those limits are breached, resources decrease, sustainability decreases. That's why these dams had to go. There's just too much at stake. Another lesson is to consider the long-term effects of our actions on other communities, on local ecosystems, on local species, and on the planet as a whole. Finally, we are moving into a level of collective consciousness where people are waking up to the harm that they are causing our planet, becoming mindful of the collective impacts that we have on our environment. This is a time of celebration as four Klamath River dams are being removed, making this the biggest dam removal in the United States today. Right here in Oregon, the revolution is here. For generations, the lands of many First Nation people were cursed by the ignorance and greed of the colonial infrastructure. And for the first time in generations, the First Nation people can see a future where the land their ancestors have stewarded for hundreds of thousands of years can breathe once again and witness the return of abundance and prosperity to their homeland. This abundance reaches all the people of Earth because that's freaking ecology. Iron Gate, COPCO1, COPCO2, and JC Boyle, 
these are the planned dam removals for 2024. Dam removals are a process and steps need to be taken to prevent further damage to ecosystems and communities. We can thank all the water protectors that have manifested this miracle who have been fighting for years to access to their own land, to clean water, to sustenance for their families and communities. I am of course talking about the First Nation people who have suffered enormous casualties due to colonialism and the federal government promising water to farmers, a promise that they inevitably could not keep. The government not keeping promises? Shocker. I definitely think farmers should seek compensation from the federal government for damages and losses. Stop fighting with water protectors. Be a water protector. When we stand up for the rights of nature, we stand up for the planet, for the people, for our future. We all need water, which makes us all water protectors. Stand up for Mother Earth. Three cheers for the downfall of damaging dams and the liberation of salmon and Mother Earth. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Collect your own water, grow your own food, support local, support organic, down with factory farms, land back, live long and prosper.